at Washington John Greenleaf Whittier and Person Quo, with the cold and wintry noon light. On its roofs and steeples shed, shadows weaving with te sunlight from the gray sky overhead, broadly, vaguely, all around me, lies the half-built town outspread. Through this broad street, restless ever, ebbs and flows a human tide, wave on wave a living river. Wealth and fashion side by side. Toiler, idler, slave and master, in the same quick current glide. Underneath yon dome, whose coping springs above them, vast and tall, grave men in the dust are groping. For the largest, base and small, which the hand of power is scattering, crumbs which from its table fall. Base of heart. They vilely barter honor's wealth for party's place. Step by step on freedom's charter leaving footprints of disgrace. For today's poor pittance turning from the great hope of their race. Yet, where festal lamps are throwing glory round the dancer's hair, gold tressed, like an angel's, flowing backward on the sunset air. And the low quick pulse of music beats its measure sweet and rare, there tonight shall woman's glances, star-like, welcome give to them. Fawning fools with shy advances seek to touch their garments' hem, with the tongue of flattery gilzing deeds which God and truth condemn. From this glittering lie my vision takes a broader, sadder range, full before me have arisen other pictures dark and strange. From the parlor to the prison must the scene and witness change. Hark! The heavy gate is swinging on its hinges, harsh and slow. One pale prison lamp is flinging on a fearful group below such a light as leaves to terror whatsoe'er it does not show. Pitying God! Is that a woman on whose wrist the shackles clash? Is that shriek she utters human, underneath the stinging lash? Are they men whose eyes of madness from that sad procession flash? Still the dance goes gaily onward. What is it to wealth and pride that without the stars are looking on a scene which earth should hide? That the slave ship lies in waiting, rocking on Potomac's tide. Vainly to that mean ambition which, upon the rival's fall, winds above its old condition, with a reptile's slimy crawl, shall the pleading voice of sorrow, Shall the slave in anguish call? Vainly to the child of fashion, giving to ideal work graceful luxury of compassion, shall the stricken mourner go? Hateful seems the earnest sorrow, beautiful the hollow show. Nay, my words are all too sweeping, in this crowded human mart, feeling is not dead, but sleeping. Man's strong will and woman's heart, in the coming strife for freedom, yet shall bear their generous part. And from yonder sunny valleys, southward in the distance lost, freedom yet shall summon allies worthier than the North can boast, with the evil by their hearthstones grappling at severer cost. Now, the soul alone is willing. Fain the heart and weak the knee. And as yet no lip is thrilling with the mighty words, Am person quo. Be free. Am person quo. Tarrieth long the land's good angel but his advent is to be. Meanwhile, turning from the revel to the prison cell my sight, for intenser hate of evil, for a keener sense of right, shaking off thy dust, I thank thee, city of the slaves, tonight. Am person quo. To thy duty now and ever. Dream no more of rest or stay, give to freedom's great endeavor all thou art and hast today, am person quo. Thus, above the city's murmur, saith a voice, or seems to say. Ye with heart and vision gifted to discern in love the right, whose worn faces have been lifted to the slowly growing light, where from freedom's sunrise drifted slowly back the murk of night. Ye who through long years of trial still have held your purpose fast, while a lengthening shade the dial from the westering sunshine cast, and of hope each hour's denial seemed an echo of the last. O oh my brothers! O oh, my sisters! Would to God that ye were near, gazing with me down the vistas of a sorrow strange and drear! Would to God that ye were listeners to the voice I seem to hear! With the storm above us driving, with the false earth mind below, who shall marvel if thus striving we have counted friend as foe? 
and to one another giving in the darkness blow for blow. Well it may be that our natures have grown sterner and more hard, and the freshness of their features somewhat harsh and battle-scarred, and their harmonies of feeling overtasked and rudely jarred. Be it so. It should not swerve us from a purpose true and brave. Dearer freedom's rugged service than the pastime of the slave. Better is the storm above it than the quiet of the grave. Let us then, uniting, bury all our idle feuds and dust, and to future conflicts carry mutual faith and common trust. Always he who most forgiveth in his brother is most just. From the eternal shadow rounding all our sun and starlight here, voices of our lost ones sounding bid us be of heart and cheer, through the silence, down the spaces, falling on the inward ear. No, we not our dead are looking downward with us at surprise, all our strife of words rebuking with their mild and loving eyes. Shall we grieve the holy angels? Shall we cloud our blessed skies? Let us draw their mantles o'er us, which have fallen in our way. Let us do the work before us, cheerly, bravely, while we may, ere the long night silence cometh, and with us it is not day.